have my little note cards. It's like college. <laughs> I love it. Um, Ed, what the fuck are we doing here? This is so crazy. How exciting. I ask myself that question like almost every place I, I am. I know. It's like, what are we doing here? I think, um, <laughs> you still don't know, I don't know. Um, this is very exciting. This is the first sort of presentation I've ever done in this format. And I'm a big uh, synchronicities girl. And I was sitting in a, a Deepak Chopra convention of higher consciousness watching Mick Rock talk about his um, photography and acid trips and Arianna Huffington, her epiphanies on, in business and life. And I sat there and, and I was invited as a performer and I was watching all of these talks and I was like, God, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if I could like share a story and inspire someone because I found it really uh, energizing. And about a week later, I got this invitation to come speak at Chicago Ideas Week, and I was like, absolutely, yes. I had no idea what I would say or how it would go, and I was like, have to do it. And um, one of the things I love about songwriting and musicians and artists and all of these paths that we're on is that um, I think it's really important to try things before you know how you're going to pull it off. And that was part of my process of getting here. And um, I invited my friend Ed, who is fabulous, and... Um, approaching songwriting in a in a new new way and really inspiring me to to join me because I really feel like we have interesting conversations about music, the industry, songwriting and we just wanted to have an open dialogue about creativity and and transformation and and see what happened, <laughs> you know. Feel free to shout out any questions at any time. Yeah, you can ask How's us whatever doing? you doing want. You doing all right? You're all good. Everybody's good. We should tell some background. We should tell background people. Should I introduce myself? Yeah. I'm Rishi Amagata. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I started in music in Chicago, actually. Um, my first uh, songwriting efforts happened on uh, the, the, the roof of an artist loft, which I think is now the Restoration Hardware on North Avenue. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I was attending Northwestern University and I was following, I was pursuing theater and languages, but languages just so I could get out of school and go to another country and they denied me. So I pursued theater and I got kicked out of acting class because it was an early class and I never went and I always got things wrong. And <clears throat> it was through that that I uh, started researching uh, acting for opera students because I needed, I still wanted to pursue theater, but I got kicked out of the, the, the big, big dogs thing. So. Um, and I, I uh, met some people there and really got focused on um, uh, voice and uh, went to see a band called Bumpus at a pool hall in Chicago and fell in love with the entire thing and, and uh, trailed them and wrote songs and was the, the harmony in the room when it, when it was needed. And um, that was uh, my first uh, songwriting venture and then uh, we all had crazy jobs around Chicago, and I was working at Tsunami and Kamahachi, Japanese restaurants here in Chicago, writing lyrics on my arm, writing lyrics in the little, you know, the, the waitress pads that you have and um, telling stories. And uh, I believe it was XRT, the, the local music night that played my first song on the radio. I was behind Kamahachi at the... Uh, the bar and listening to my Walkman and um, serving drinks and it came on a song called Collide. So uh, Chicago has a, has a lot to do with my uh, musical beginnings. Ed, you're on. Tell us about you. Um, my name is also Rachel Yamagata. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, actually, I met Rachel about ten years ago and was just so completely blown away by what she does. I, I personally have had a very random, weird path. Um, I've had more uh, unrelated jobs than anyone that I've ever met. And um, I was uh, a carpenter, and I actually branded cattle in Wyoming. And then um, <laughs> I was a teacher for a while, and so I'm really not qualified to do anything. And <laughs> so, um, and then I somehow found myself, I got a job as um, in production, putting on actually shows a lot like this, uh, but I always kind of wanted to do music. I mean, and I don't know, um, I'm sure everyone here has had this experience where a song or a songwriter has, 
you know, gotten them through a really hard time. Um, signal if, you, if that registers at all. Anybody? Thank you. <laughs> um, like for me, it was John Prine, you know, like hearing the music of John Prine literally saved my life. You know, like I'm a, I, I could burst into tears and act like a moron. Do more, it. more Do than it. right now. Do it. But so in any event, I just got very, very interested in music, and um, I'm, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about music. We're the songwriter yeah. portion of this. Yeah. Let's talk about songs. Um, so I'm just curious, who's in the room tonight? Are there musicians in the audience? Yeah. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> uh, music industry people. Yeah, we love your. Music industry people, are you guys here? You guys want a couple? <gasps> well, look who's here, hello. Um, uh, what else do you guys do? What's the, what's the room like? You wanna know about writing songs? Yeah, yeah? all right, okay. I'll tell you. Are there some I'll people here for the songs. Rosen bar mitzvah? Um. <laughs> all right. <laughs> writing songs, songwriting 101. Um, I had a friend who described songwriting like catching butterflies, which I loved that image because they kind of sneak up on you and they're magical and you have to be gentle with them. Otherwise, uh, if you approach them too forcefully, you might crush them forever and then you got dead butterfly wings on your, on your hands. Um, but they can really start, start with anything. They can start with a word. Uh, you know, they're sort of like, you, you get these emotional backed up drains, uh, these feelings in, in yourself and you need to express them and articulate them. They're sort of a, a release therapy. But I had a song that um, started with a word. You think you are such a heavy weight It don't mean nothing At the end of the day, and there is not a thing you left to bring. I won't fail nothing. There is nothing you could say to make me feel like I should walk away. I'll help you bear your heavy. Get it? Heavyweight champion, boxers. <laughs> but then you get the heavy weight. Um, I was <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are filming this, so when I review it, I'll be like... Um. But that really did start with a word. I was living in uh, Philadelphia, and Philly is big on uh, Rocky, you know, the films Rocky, and tour. When you go on tour, there's always, like, uh, you know, a National Geographic show on uh, that you watch at night or there's a Rocky Marathon and when you uh, have that around you all the time uh, it gets in your brain and I was in this relationship that was very tumultuous and uh, the person in it had had such bravado and uh, such an attack on the on the world and I just wanted to be a source of safety to say that you don't have to take on the weight of that in your in your world and um, Approach, the, approach life like a boxer. And, um, but it really did start with kind of a word. That was, that was the inspiration. And, and sometimes you just have to run with that. I mean, The thing you know I love saying? about your songs Tell is, me. How, um, <laughs> is how we, we kind of get to know what you're going through. Like, I really feel like you, you allow people to see things that a lot of people aren't willing Isn't to Isn't that what's, that's, a, that's songwriting. Songwriting is about being uh, courageous enough to be naked, be vulnerable. I think. Um, so we're going to take our clothes off. Yeah, now. you go first. <laughs> but I, I do think that vulnerability is such a key part of it. Um, I am not comfortable right now. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> You know, this is not my thing. You know, like I used to, I produce shows. I was always a backstage. I would never, ever get on stage. And like beforehand, I was petrified and, and I still am. And 
but like you have to be willing. I think the most important thing for anybody that has a dream about doing something, they kind of got to be brave about it. And um, so I went to see, uh, I grew up in a family and my father was tone deaf. And, um, and so I kind of assumed that I, was, I could never sing. So I thought, well, I, but I want to write songs. And I started writing when I was 48 years old in response to the overwhelming uh, desire for 48-year-old folk singers. <laughs> and um, because you see the ads in the paper all the time about that. And, um, and so I went to get voice lessons with this great doctor, Dr. Bill Riley in New York City. And uh, I went into his office and I sat down in a chair and I looked um, on the walls and there was pictures of Celine Dion and Pavarotti and all these people that went and got lessons with him. And then that voice that's in your head, w the one for me was like, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> and, um, and then I sat down and he said, all right, well, why don't we sing? And so he had me sing some scales and, and, he, and, and I was like, mm -hmm. and he said, why are you singing so quietly? And um, I said, well, I'm kind of afraid someone might hear. And, um, and, then, and, then, and then he said, well, isn't that the point? Um, uh, so like for me, that was a big hurdle to get past that place. I'm so proud of you, Ed. I love that you're so brave. Literally, like, Ed's the CEO of this big company you don't even know, and he's only been doing music for a few years, and it's, it's really inspiring to watch you, and I think half the battle is um, fighting that inner negativity that all artists have. Like, I think, as every artist will probably say, is like, you're on a balance beam of extreme ego where you really just think you're the shit, and then, like, the extreme self-deprecation that, um, almost makes it impossible to leave the house sometimes. You know, it's very... I feel like there's two voices in our head and one of them says, keep going. And by the way, listen to Rachel's song, Keep Going. Uh, money back guarantee, it's like one of the best songs. Um, and then there's the other voice that says, you look fat in that shirt. And, then, um, and that's the voice that you should duct tape around its mouth and put it in the trunk um, because when you work with another artist, Constant they become like a safe person to work with, you know, and that's the beauty of working with somebody like Rachel is nothing but lovely and encouraging, where my own mind um, <laughs> is different. It's totally true. I, you know, when I first started, I had people saying, don't play, don't write songs on guitar, um, but you're a piano player. And if I had never tried a song on a guitar, that's all right, because you know we're running out of time. I'll I'll, I'll just say this, um, you know I wouldn't have written the the one song that came closest to being my you know biggest single. I sat there in my bedroom and I wrote, "Worn me down like a road. I did everything you told." You know I could play two chords. It was nothing, uh. um, and. <laughs> uh. So part of it is mm, part of it is is going against what what people think might be best for you because the best intentions don't always lead to your own inner expression of of your your own evolution right like you have to be creative and think out, out of the box and for me a song like that which is so you know potentially more commercial and hooky over the years gets gets harder and harder to perform so to keep evolving as the artist you you have to stay on top of your own inner gut feeling energized and um, excited because that's how you connect with an audience. And um, one of the, the fun things about songwriting is if you're not feeling it in one particular realm, then you know, switch it up and... Uh, Worn me down like a road I did everything Everything you told me, don't do. You know, change the instrument, make it more intense. When I was thinking of this talk, I was like, what am I going to talk about? I wasn't feeling inspired, so I did it in a British accent driving in my car. I was like, <laughs> good evening, I'm Rachel Yamagata, and I'm here to talk about songwriting. Is that even British? 
Like you have to mix it up and make sure, it, you have to stay invested. I think that's one of the, the keys to, to staying in the moment and being honest is always being accountable for, for the, in the in the moment, in the room uh, energy and not just, you know, pass it off to something. And um, where am I going with this? Let me, let me look, what are we talking about? <laughs> Honesty. Honesty. The honest song. Um, the masks that we and wear. For me, as like a person that has run a business, um, I was applying CEO brain to music, and I wanted to learn from the people that were really, really good at it. And there, a lot of them are in Nashville, so I was taking songwriting classes. And I would leave a business meeting in New York City wearing a suit, and then I would drive, fly to Nashville, and then I would be in my underwear at a, <laughs> a Starbucks parking lot, and fortunately never got arrested. But um, <laughs> But um, so um, I wrote I wrote this song, and here's the amazing thing about honesty. Like what I love about songs is that you know people say I want to write a good song, and 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 I think maybe write an honest song because that's inherently good. So then you don't even have to worry about it being good. Um, and so I, I worked with this woman that I met at one of the songwriting clinics, who as she had been adopted and was doing a record that was unrelentingly dark about uh, adoption. And I said, hey, why don't we write an upbeat orphan song? And, <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then, uh, and then she can actually kept talking to me. Um, <laughs> and, and this is all new, because I was a student. And so then she took me on the road, we went on the road. And then while we were traveling, because she was adopted, she said, um, I want to take a DNA test to learn about who my family is. And so writing music is a risk because you're gonna learn something really true. Um, so, uh, but everyone here is brave, I think. And um, so she took a DNA test, asked me to do it with her, and I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. You know, my last name is Romanov, and I grew up in a Russian family where everyone is dark and square and hairy. And, um, but they're very nice people. And my results came back and it said that, um, that I was actually Irish. And so this was two, three years ago in 2010. So I learned through writing a song that in the family I grew up with that my father actually wasn't my father. Surprise. And so, <laughs> and so not only did I learn that my father wasn't my father, but that I'm direct descendant of this guy Niall of the Nine Hostages who captured St. Patrick and brought him to Ireland. You're welcome. <laughs> and, so, and so I had a phrase in my mind like Rachel's heavyweight. And this phrase I had written with my friend way before I even got the results, I had this phrase in my mind called, uh, that was like, I got my face from a man that I haven't met. And so I, I wrote the song called St. Vincent uh, about this orphanage in New Orleans, not knowing that St. Vincent was like a hugely popular organization in Ireland. And um, anyway, so I, I wrote this thing that just started off being like, well, I got my face from a man that I have not met. And I've been looking for him, but I ain't found him yet. And if there is a place where missing things go, well, either he's there or I am, but I know it's not both. And so um, I ended up, wow, thanks. So I, I yeah, so I wrote that song. <laughs> We're out of time. Uh, this is crap. crazy. We should wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. Together, we are the picture of the CEO becoming the artist, the artist, artist. becoming the CEO, right? right. You all are so awesome. Thank you super, for Super, super cool. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Can't you guys could sing a song? Yeah. Is that putting you on the spot? If if you've ever listened to my radio show, you know that there is no I, clock, there is I no time. It. That's why we do the 6 a.m. news about 6:03 or I'm 4, so whenever I get there. We're such <laughs> talkers. <laughs> oh my God! Let's see if this works. Um, 
So will you sing on one of mine? Will you be the male love interest of this song, Ed? Definitely. All right. Um. <laughs> when can I start? <laughs> be, my, be my male love interest. It's kind of a love song with a subtext of it's not going to work out, but at the time you're singing it, you think it might, so. Oh, lover, hold on Till I come back again For these arms are growing tired And my tails are wearing thin And if you're patient, I will surprise And when you wake up, you will find Yamagata. 